Welcome to video 6.1b, Wave Velocity Calculations. This is a continuation of the first video where we looked at the characteristics of waves. Now we're going to look at how to calculate stuff about them. If we start out with looking at transverse waves, we have a small picture here to show the shorter wavelengths versus longer wavelengths, what it actually looks like on a picture. Keeping in mind that wavelength is typically measured in meters and has the symbol of lambda. When we are thinking about that, this is a distance measurement. If we're looking for velocity, remember that velocity is a distance over a time. So we already have our distance. We measure that with wavelength. So now we need to talk about a time. When we are looking at time, what we call it for a wave is a period. The period is the amount of time it takes for one wave to pass a certain point. So if I was standing here, say, and I'm watching this wave go by, I can time how long it takes for the crest to crest to move past me. And that would give me the period. Period symbol is a capital T, not a lowercase t like time. Make sure that you use a capital T here. And it's basically a measurement of seconds per wave. So the units for it are in seconds. However, a lot of times the period of a wave, because of the size of the wavelengths being so small, is too small for us to actually take a measurement of. So when that's the case, instead of looking at period, we look at what we call the frequency. How many waves pass a certain point in a second? So frequency is the waves per second, which has units of 1 over seconds, which is also called hertz. You should be able to see from looking at these that really period and frequency are the inverse of each other. So if we know one, we can figure out the other, and then of course we can find the velocity from this. Our regular kinematics velocity of d distance over time, we can then convert into a velocity equation that we can use for all waves. This works for all types of waves. That we have the velocity is equal to frequency times the wavelength and our units will still end up to be meters per second because frequency is 1 over seconds and wavelength is in meters. We can also look at what the velocity is of a wave on a rope or on a string or in some medium that we can vibrate. In this case, we have to look at the properties of the material that's vibrating because they have such an influence on the velocity of the wave that's going through them. The only exception would be if, and rather than having something that's wide enough to be called a rope, if we had a string. If we had a string that was very, very thin, then the effects of the string itself would not be very great. We could probably ignore them. So in this case, we have velocities equal to the square root of f of t over mass per length. f of t is the force of tension of the rope. So how tight is the rope held between two ends? The mass, of course, is the mass of the rope in kilograms. The length is the amount of rope that is oscillating. In this particular case, the length is not the wavelength of the wave on the rope, but the amount of rope itself. When we have that ratio of mass per length, that's the characteristic of the rope or the object that is the medium, rather, that is oscillating. It's called the linear density. And the symbol for the linear density is mu, and it's in kilograms per meter. The calculations here, then, you have to know what the material is as well as the tension that you have on the rope or on the, the string or whatever your medium is in order to find out the speed of the wave. The speed is still in meters per second, just like it was before. It's just that it is the meters and the seconds are um, within all of the other units for this. So we basically have those two equations to find the velocity of a wave. So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples and see what we can come up with. So we have a certain sound wave. And let's say that the sound wave has a frequency of 170 hertz. And a wavelength of 2 meters. What is its speed of sound?
pretty simple calculation here. We're going to use the first equation of V is equal to F lambda. Our F is 170. Our lambda is 2. So the speed of sound in this particular case is 340 meters per second. Well, as it turns out, 340 meters per second is actually what we consider to be the average speed of sound at room temperature. The speed of sound does vary depending on the temperature and the humidity in air, but this particular case, the sound must be traveling through air at um, room temperature and standard pressure and humidity. Let's do one more. It's a little bit different um, setup. Let's say that we have a laser that has a wavelength of 532 nanometers. It's a green laser. Um, and I want to know what is the frequency. Well, again, if I want to use that V is equal to F lambda, that means that F is V over lambda. This is a laser. Lasers are, of course, light. So our laser would be traveling at the speed of light. So the speed of light, we're going to remember, is 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by the wavelength of 532 nanometers. Well, nanometers is times 10 to the negative 9. So if we do this out, we find out that the frequency of the laser is 5.6 times 10 to the 14th hertz. It's an awful lot of waves going past a certain point in one particular second. But it is light. It does travel at our um, galactic speed limit, so you would expect to have that much. Let's look at an example of a water wave. You are watching water waves hit the shore at a beach, and you notice that 10 waves are hitting per minute. You also notice that the wave fronts are about 15 meters apart. In other words, the wave is hitting, and then 15 minutes later, 15 meters behind it is the next one. So the question is, what is the speed of the wave? So again, we want to use um, F lambda. We don't have the frequency quite yet. We do have that we have 10 waves per minute. But remember, we want our speed in meters per second. So we have to change our waves per minute to waves per second. So we have 1 sixth is our frequency, 1 sixth of a hertz. So our speed then is 15, which is our wavelength, times 1 sixth, which is our frequency. And we end up with the speed of the water waves being 2.5 meters per second. If we change from looking at water waves, however, to be looking at waves on a wire, things get a little bit more complicated because we have to use the other equation. So let's say that we have a wave whose wavelength is um, 0 0.3 meters. And it is traveling down 300 meters of wire. And that wire has a total mass of 15 kilograms. If the wire has a tension, is pulled tight with a tension of um, 1,000 newtons, what is the speed and frequency of the wave?
if we use the, um, we need to use the other velocity equation here. So V is equal to the square root of the force of tension over the mass per length. And we have all of those values. So we have 1,000 over 15 over 300. So we can quickly find out that the speed of the wave traveling through the wire is 140 meters per second. means that that wire is oscillating pretty darn quickly. So now we want to find out what is the frequency. So if we go back to our other equation where frequency is the speed per wavelength, then we have our speed of 140. We have our wavelength of 0 0.3. And so the frequency of this wave is 470 hertz. If we were to change the wire that this was going down, both the speed and the frequency would change as well. Now one of the things you want to look at with this equation and with the variables in it and what you want to think about are how do these variables actually affect the speed of the wave. If your tension increases then both the speed and the frequency will also increase. However, if your uh, wire becomes thicker and denser, oops, sorry about that. wire becomes thicker and denser, then your m over l is going to change, and that is going to cause your speed and frequency to decrease. Because again, then the characteristics of the wire come in to have more of an effect on it because it's a larger number there in the denominator. So with these couple of quick little examples here, you have an idea of how to solve calculations about the speed of mechanical waves. So that's it for today. See you tomorrow.